Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Chris here, CG Aviator, back in the cockpit with the Transal C160. And in this video, we're going to be taking on a mission. So we'll be departing Liverpool John Lennon, which is where we are. Uh, we'll go across to RAF Valley, but along the way, we're going to fly VFR up the Mersey. And in fact, if I show you my little nav map overlay, so we'll depart here, we'll go VFR up the Mersey, like I've done so many times in the Hawk T1 for real. Uh, and then we'll go from Whiskey Alpha Lima VOR, about 5,000 feet down towards Playboy Lake, where we'll enter low level. We'll then fly down past Bala and into the Mac Loop. I'll show you how to fly this thing successfully around the Mac Loop. From there, we'll take it across to the West Coast, which is Clan Better Airfield, which is a small little strip. Uh, we'll do a tactical approach, short field landing, but a touch and go, and then we'll take it across the Clint Peninsula and over to RAF Valley, where we'll do an ILS to runway 13. There is a lot going on, so what I'll do is I'll put chapters in the description below so you can uh, skip ahead should you wish to. But this is not going to be a teach of how to follow the checklist and proper procedure in this airplane. No, no. This is going to be a mission management type of video where I fly like a military aviator, adapt and overcome to all the uh, unserviceabilities in this airplane, and just take this aircraft through all the different types of mission that it can uh, do. So I will mention all the bugs as I see them, and there are a few since I did my beta preview video. So this is version 1.0. And there are a couple of things not working, but in like uh, all military aviators, I will adapt and overcome. The so first things first, whilst we hold short here, we'll look down to the radios. I've already tuned them up to 114.1, uh, which is Whiskey Alpha Lima VOR, and 10855, which is the ILS. Yes, it can fly an ILS just fine. Uh, the only thing I can't do with the radio aids navigation at the moment is TACAN. I haven't tried ADF because largely I never really navigate by ADF. Does anyone still do that? <laughs> anyway, I digress. So the TACAN unfortunately won't accept the uh, number, so I can't use it, which is a bit of a shame. But that is all dialed in and ready to go. Now, if we look in front of the pilot uh, pilot seat, we have the HSI with the pink and green needle. If you sit, uh, if you press the course select button, highlighted blue here, that'll flick between on the HSI VOR1, which is the pink needle, and VOR2, which is the green needle. So on the pink needle, I've then rotated the course selection knob here to set uh, 218. If I flick across to the green needle, you see that's course 194. And what I've done is I've related that to what I've got on the map, the radial 218, and my first ground uh, low level track of uh, 194, which will be my green needle. So that's that setup. You can also set decision height, not that it gives you an alert, I don't think, but I've set that to 200 feet, and that shows on the attitude indicator. It doesn't have a map arc uh, functionality, but we only need the HSI for today. There is a timer, so we're also going to do some clock to map to ground type navigation. Uh, and if you want to start stop the clock, it's on elapsed time, which you can select by twisting this knob here from wind. You can get the wind, which is pretty useful, all the way to ET, which I think is elapsed time. And you can start stop with this knob down here. You just press the end of it, he says. Sometimes it takes a couple of clicks. And then stop it, and then you can reset it by scrolling, clicking and holding, and scrolling to the left to reset the time. I haven't found a, uh, a button reset for it. Uh, you can also press the uh, chrono start stop top right on the glare shield. That'll also work. So we'll use that in low level for some uh, Billy Basics navigation. Uh, I didn't mention these buttons down here next to the course select button. So this one's for the green needle. It flicks between TACAN and VOR. And this one is for the pink needle. It flicks between ADF and VOR. Uh, next to the HSI, we have this switch here. It defaults to ADF. Just make sure that uh, you can see the white arrow spinning around. Make sure that's selected to VOR. And once we get airborne and we pick up the signal for the VOR, it will point directly at it. Cool. Um, one thing I'll mention now is there is a bug with the course deviation bar, so the central portion of the pink or green needle. It seems to deflect full scale and doesn't give you increments on the VOR, but it works just fine for the ILS. Right, I think we have covered off everything we need to, and anything I've forgotten will take airborne and sort out there. Quick pre-takeoff checks, my basic ones that I use for all aeroplanes. So we've selected the flaps, we've got the lights on, taxi and landing lights, we've got the anti-ice, so we've got no orange lights top right there. Pito is done IFF, in fact there we go, 4577 selected, windows are shut and the doors, which are the lights up here, are all shut as well. Uh, so let's take this thing airborne. Now I'll get my excuses out of the way, it's just me in here, it should be a crew of three or four, and I'll be navigating, flying, operating the autopilot occasionally, uh, and also doing some camera work just so you can get some stunning views. Because once we clear this weather, it does clear up, I hope. Uh, but it, it would be fun to fight this weather. Okay, lining up on, what's that, Romy 27? That makes sense. Headings look decent on the kit. Tow brakes on, full power. 
So also remember, if you like the sort of content, a bit more long form, a little bit more total mission, please put that in the comments below. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask those. Happy to answer and help as I, uh, as I can. Okay, the engine seems to have stabilised. Let's brokes release. Now, I'm guessing in terms of my rotate speed, it suggests, I think, 70 or 80. I'll probably go to 90, maybe 100, just given the weight. I could use the windscreen wipers. There's some nice rain effects, but unfortunately the wipers don't actually push the rain out of the way. That's 390. Collecting about 5 to 10 degrees nose up. We have positive rate gear up. The rad out is next to the uh, digital altimeter you can see reading, and I'll look to 500 feet. And we'll just we'll just try our best to uh, follow the Mersey. This is probably a bit well. This is very illegal. We'll try our best. Okay, approaching 500 feet. It's a right turn out. We can just make out the coast. And that's cool. Okay. That's the first thing. So gear is up, flaps up. I do see the red light that's on the gear indicator. Now that should mean the gear is in transit. Uh, and it should extinguish once uh, once it's finished moving. Unfortunately, it looks like a bug, which I fed back. Um, but if you know otherwise, please let me know in the comments. Okay, this has cleared up nicely. So around about 500 feet, maybe a little bit high. At 240 knots. About 13 to 14,000 RPM on the RPM gauge down here. Should hold about 210. And here we go. Now what I could do is dial down, let's, let's do this shall we, let's show you what it looks like by night, because I've done this in the Hawk T1 by night and it's such an amazing experience. I could dial down some of the brightness, but uh, here you go, this is what it looks like to cruise down at 500 feet up the Mersey. So not the best, it could be a bit brighter because there's a lot of rain showers around. But there you go, let's put the, uh, let's put the sun back up. There we go. All right, so navigation-wise, let's have a look at the map, big picture. So if up the Mersey, in fact, I can get a little nav map to follow me. There we go. Uh, I can see where the uh, where the land ends on the left-hand side. That's when I need to turn left, but I can turn left pretty much anywhere from this point. This looks amazing. Uh, we can see the white arrow indicator is pointing at our VOR, which is nice. Uh, so let's climb up and head uh, head southwest. What I'll do with the weather is I'll play around with it a little bit, just so we can get a combination of really bad weather to deal with and also some nice views, because the scenery is spectacular. In terms of my rate of climb, I'm not doing best angle or best rate because that'd be a lot slower than I'm going. What I'm doing is like a cruise climb because we've only got about uh, 25, 30 miles to travel. I want to keep my speed up a little bit just to shorten the transit time. And fuel's not an issue, so I'm uh, not too bothered by that. The other thing I'd be doing a lot of is looking out. But uh, as it's a sim, and I'll make you dizzy by doing that a lot, I'm not going to be looking out as much as I should be. Okay, climbing up, we'll go to cloud base for about five or six thousand feet. See what that gives us. We are tracking. In fact, what's happening is the white needle is pointing off to the right, so the VOR is slightly off to the right hand side, which is not a problem. We can intercept after the VOR. Here's a top tip if you didn't realise, unless you're a pilot, you probably know this. If you fly overhead and VOR, it will not show you zero on the distance. So we're currently at 1.4, and then we're slightly offset. Because we're up at four and a half, five thousand feet, that's about 0 0.8, 0 0.9 miles. So what it actually gives you is slant range. So if you fly overhead a VOR, it'll actually show you your altitude in miles. There you go. If you didn't know that, you do now. We didn't get within one mile of the VOR, so that works out. VOR is going round. It's now behind us. It's counting up. And what we should see momentarily as it settles is the pink bar, the course deviation bar, which is currently full scale right deflection. It should transit in nice and slowly and then allow us to track centrally down the radial. Unfortunately, it's a level off at 6,000 feet. Oh, there we go. As I was doing that, it's gone full scale left. So it doesn't allow you that, uh, that precision for tracking radials. But what we'll do is take the raw data, 
which is the white needle pointing. We'll take the tail end of the white needle and just try and pull that to uh, be 218 on that little gauge. I can't remember what it's called now. It's like a HSI, but it just has the BORs on it. Look at this now. This is what I'm talking about. Let's put in the autopilot whilst we're here. So it's best to be nice and stable. When you select the altitude hold, it'll give you your current altitude as the one you're setting. Try and be nice and level for it so it doesn't wander after you've set it. And then we'll select the, if I position the camera, that's autopilot, that's altitude. It does wander, I'll give it a chance, it'll come back. Uh, and I'll set the heading. So if I click the heading knob here, it'll set the heading bug to the 12 o'clock. I'll rotate it to the right, it's good technique because after I set heading, select, where is it, this button here. Ah, okay, when you do heading select, it snaps to your current heading. Let's rotate it around, because I want to know that the aircraft's responding to the heading bug, and if it's in the 12 o'clock, you can't guarantee that's what's happened. But the aircraft is responding, so the autopilot looks like it's in there nicely. So in terms of following the radial, because we're outbound, um, if I zoom in on here, you can see the tail end of the white needle is currently 214. So if I move to the right of the aircraft, so if I go to a 22 or 23 zero heading, like so, I'll be pulling the tail end of the white needle towards the 218, which is the radial I'm trying to fly. That makes sense? I think so. Uh, and that's how we can get close using the raw data. Now, next event is going to be descending down, so let's have a quick look at the map. Uh, let's do that. Zoom in. So it says 218 at 24 miles, so that's where we're going to Playboy Lake. Playboy Lake is called that because it looks like the uh, Playboy logo. There you go. Looks quite nice there. Uh, so we need to know when to descend. So we are currently at oh, 5,900 feet. Let's have a quick look at the autopilot on here. So this is the cheats method of autopilot. That should show 6,000. Maybe it's still working on it. Uh, so I need to descend from 6,000 feet-ish down to about 1,000 feet, allowing for the ground elevation. So that's losing 5,000 feet. I want to double that to uh, 10. So 5,000 times two is 10. So 10 miles from Playboy Lake, that's when I need to start descending. Now because I'm using the VOR and it's counting up, I need to take 10 miles off my 24, uh, which makes uh, 14. So when the distance says 14, it's currently 12.8, I can start descending down. So that's how I've planned that out. Uh, weather, it's always good to have a look out the front of the weather. The weather doesn't look too bad. I'll probably make it a little bit worse, to be honest, once we get into low level. Let's give me something to work with. Let's have a look outside this aeroplane quickly. I know we're about time to descend, but Just look at this. Glorious. Okay, so let's switch off the autopilot like that. Cancel the alert, pull the power and start descent down. Looking at the front, we're looking for a lake out there somewhere. Uh, for Raki's checks is normally what I do from for descent. I'm not a multi-engine pilot, I'm a fast jet pilot by trade. Uh, but fuel is obviously going to be plenty in this aeroplane. I check the balance and all that good stuff. Uh, instruments are fine, radios are fine, altimeters uh, set for the lowest regional pressure setting. Uh, conditioning anti-ice can stay where it is. Safety altitude I'm not really using, but it's about 4,000 feet, I guess. I can see just through this rain shower, there's the lake. I'm not sure if it stands out in the video particularly well. Also entering low level, check if we've got visor down, uh, loose items are all clear, uh, lights are all on, yes, altimeter are already checked, radius are already checked, I'm not using radius today. Scorking, we're going to keep uh, 4, uh, 4577, I would select 7001, that's the appropriate low level squawk. And then you can note the time, but what we'll do is we'll reset our clock, and whilst I remember, let's set our course select over to the green needle. So the green needle will be our track that we're using at low level and the first one that we're going to use is uh, to, uh, 194. There we go. Ah, the weather's actually a little bit worse than I thought, so that's nice. It looks fantastic though. So what I'm going to fly is 240 knots, which gives me 4 miles a minute. I think this aeroplane would be much better suited to 210, but what 240 knots gives me is 4 miles a minute, so easy math. 210 I think is 3.5 miles a minute, just makes it a little bit more complicated. I want to be on track, on speed. The 
green needle is now pointing to 12 o'clock, so that's good. Speed is a little bit fast, and I'll hack the clock once we pass over the corner of Playboy Lake. Round about there. And the clock is now running. So we'll now use the rad out to try and get ourselves down to uh, about an average of 300 feet with a minimum separation distance of a 250, which is normal for UK flying. And I need to know when my next event is, so it should be Barla, uh, and that'll be at 10 miles. So if I looked at my map, it'd be 10 miles away. So if I'm going 4 miles a minute, covering 10 miles, 4 into 10 go 2.5, so 2.5 minutes, that's when I'd expect to be at Barla. And that's how that works out. So we'll check that on the clock. And now we can just sit down and enjoy the view. So we just fly the accurate speeds, accurate headings, wait for the time to come in and think about what happens next. So from there we just follow the uh, lake to the south and west towards uh, the Mac Loop. Remember if you're enjoying this video please hit that like button if you want to support the channel hit the uh, subscribe it's always very much appreciated. If you've got any questions about this aircraft or military flying or techniques that you hear me using then feel free to ask I'm happy to help. Okay, one minute and ten, so we've got one minute and twenty seconds until we get to Barla. Visibility wise, I think it's a 5k visibility rule. As long as you can see good horizons through the showers, you're pretty much okay. Uh, but I'm always looking for options to go left and right, so I could go to the left, but that's outside of my route, so it'd be pretty tricky. I'm actually going that direction, so if I wanted to, I could turn right here and go down that lake. Hang on, is that Lake Barla? No, I don't think it was. I think that's a different one. That might have been pork chop. Have confidence, Chris. Have confidence. Okay, 1 minute 55. Just to the right of the nose, there is a lake. The timing works out. Heading's been alright. The wind, we can trip over to the wind and see what the wind is doing to us. Four knots from the west. Easy. Oh yeah, this is the weather I'm talking about. This is the good stuff. Right, options. We could go slightly further south. I can see a bit more horizon that way. We'll keep going this way, down the lake. Uh, the next track should be 218, and I'll change the green arrow in just a minute. Timing-wise, we're now 2 minutes 30, so I was about 3 seconds out of my calculation and my flying, so that's not bad. Don't go slow. Okay, 218. So let's set this course. Green arrow. Juggling everything. 218. And 218 is the track that we want all the way down to the entrance to the Mac Loop. So that's nice and simple. Oh, and the weather's cleared up. Let me see if I can get a view from outside. Nice. I'm probably climbing a little bit because I'm not flying anymore. Bad trimming. Trim it out. Okay, so the weather has been kind to us so far. Let's go ahead and open the uh, ramp because that's always fun to hang out of. See the lights illuminate for the ramp door. That is spectacular. Uh, what I could have done is figured out the next timing. So it's about 14, it's 14 and a half miles. So four miles a minute goes four, eight, 12 and a bit so that's probably three three minutes 45 seconds on top of my two minutes 30 gives us a uh, six minutes 15 so because i didn't reset my clock at six minutes and 15 seconds we're currently approaching four minutes we should get to the mac loop he says hopefully have a quick look out the uh, other back look at that that's a proper welsh day that is isn't it traffic on the roads Absolutely stunning. Look at this. That's what I was talking about. That is beautiful weather conditions. And this is 300 feet on the rad out, so pretty low. Now if I just head 218 out, the, out of this valley, just heading 218 in the distance, if I zoom in, you can probably just start to make out the V-shaped entrance to the Mac Loop. A bit hazy, but it's there. 
could also do on the EFB. Have some fun. This is where I distract myself too much. I can open the side door. Yes, look at that. Put my head out the window. And I'm flying it from the door. <laughs> oh, there's the V over there. Come on, pilot, come to the left. It's just incredible. I love the fact that there's a nice ramp to sit on. Okay, let's focus now. Let's shut that door. It does add a bit of noise. So here we go. We're now entering the Mac loop. Now, nicely, the weather has cleared up. I've flown this before in almost well, a mile visibility, and it was pretty A-level. But this Mac loop run is won or lost by flying accurately, like a like the racing line. So you have to position ahead of each corner, hit the apex, and make sure you anticipate the roll rate. So this thing takes about four or five times longer to roll to set your bank than it does in a jet probably even longer to be honest so you need to anticipate each turn not only by the turn radius which is bigger but also about the roll rate it's very satisfying to get right so here we go entering at uh, CAD the other thing you want to do is stay nice and low and if you find when you're pulling yourself around the corner the nose starts climbing you want to increase the bank fairly simple. It seems uh, counterintuitive or a little bit alien to bank up a larger aeroplane like this, but that's just how you do it. Here we go. On the right-hand side, we're going to be going to the left down this valley here towards Chorus. So I'm going to start rolling now. Rolling, 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 and now I'm going to start pulling. It just takes a lot longer to set those turns. Still got to watch out for wingtip clearance, maintain my 250 feet MSD, and watch out for the outside of the turn, because you don't want to scrape your belly off anything. Look at that. Can't stay for very long. Getting nervous. Okay, this ridge on the left-hand side, I'll try and tag that, or get closest to that, and then play my turn so I can keep turning around to the right. There we go, start my roll. That's just phenomenal. A little bit of rain showers down towards McCuntliff Village. Should be alright. Up and over this ridge line. There's definitely no way we can go down to the left there. Not a chance. <laughs> I want to sit here. Somebody else fly for a minute so I can enjoy the view. Alright, can't stay there for too long. Uh, this turn is one of the hardest because you have to turn before the valley allows you to so you do have to clip the inside ridge a little bit a bit of rain not a problem can't let this in the 12 o'clock so we'll start our turn early healthy amount of bank and what you'll find is you have to clip this inside ridge watching out for wingtip separation but that allows you to get nicely into this valley and all is well in the world. Of course, that's 250 feet. We check to the outside. Lovely. I sit on the sit on the rail again. Sit on the ramp. Nice. So, for those of you that bought this airplane, what have you been doing with it? What missions have you been flying? Always interested to hear where people are flying. Because admittedly, even though I have the world to play in, I still stick to the places I know, like the Mac Loop, maybe the uh, Lake District. Right, next, after we go around the Mac Loop, is to head across to Lambeda. It's going to be a 300 track to get direct to Lambeda, but the runway is orientated, I think it's 32 or 33? 33. And then after our approach, as a happy coincidence, it's a 330 track from Clambeda up to the valley. What I'll do, if the weather does stay too nice, I'll make it worse. So when I do the ILS, I have to work a bit harder. So what I'll do is I'll make sure my course bar is selected to the green one. I will then change that to uh, 330 remembering that it's 300 once I exit the Mac loop. Uh, 
anyone interested in the weather that I use in here is uh, SoFly Weather Preset Pro. It's uh, spring showers, I think it is, adjusted ever so slightly just to make it uh, a little nicer than zero visibility. And I'm recording this on OBS, that's how I record my videos. And usually I use Sky Dolly to record my, uh, my flight so I can play it back with external views, but this one is uh, slightly different, it's all live, it's almost as if I'm streaming it. One take, so no pressure. I'd love it if someone could fix those textures around here, because just the black lump doesn't look very nice. Okay, here's one of those cases where you need to be careful about the, uh, the ground on the outside. We're all nice and safe, and here we are running down towards bluebells. That is the Mac Loop. I do enjoy the Mac Loop. There is a mini Mac Loop, and I did a video of it with the P51. That's really small. It's up, um, I guess, just west of Yorkshire. But I'll link that perhaps so you can check that out. Mini Mac Loop, a lot of fun. Certainly not possible in an aeroplane like this. Buzz the cars. Nice. For some reason, the flight sim reckons that there's a row of terraced houses there. I beg to differ. Right, whilst we're here and the weather's nice, let's have a take another look outside before we climb up. Absolutely glorious. Okay, up we go. What we're going to do here is we're going to turn right, get ourselves heading towards Clan Bedder. Let's see if I can pull the map up for you. There it is. So whilst the little nav map is tracking me GPS-wise, you don't really need it if you use the track, allow for the wind, do the old school navigation piece. Okay, what we'll do here is we'll get the ramp up. Like that. Other than the ramp, I think all the doors are good. Uh, recovery checks are fine. The main thing is to remember the altimeter setting, which is, surprise, surprise, 1013. Let's make the weather a little bit worse whilst we're here. Uh, so let's go for that. A bit more coverage. There we go. Now we're talking. Let's go this way. I mean, look at that. Let's slow this thing down. Let's get it configured. The doors are all shut. Airfield is down to the right somewhere. Where are you? There it is. Right, two o'clock. This will be a tactical approach, about 130 knots. Full flap, air brake. I think the full flap limiting speed is actually 130 knots, so be careful if you use this technique, if you're bothered about overstressing it in terms of speed. Let's shut the gear down. Flap down. More flap. There's our runway, the small one. Yeah, green arrow is our uh, indication of runway alignment, so that's cool. I think... Air brakes out, you can see aero on the attitude indicator. We've got full flap, we've got uh, five greens, and here we go. We've got to aim at a point on the ground just before the runway, because what I'll do is do a two-stage flare, because we're 
We're descending at a rate of about 5,000 feet a minute. Can't resist. Should be flying more accurately, but I can't resist having a look outside. There we go. Looks like it's working out all right. Wind-wise, in fact, we should have a look at the wind, shouldn't we? Wind is four knots from the left, so that's all right. I'm a little bit steep on this one, to be fair. <laughs> this looks ridiculous. Okay. Uh, first stage flare. There it is. I'll keep the speed brake out. Second stage flare. Down to the runway. Speed brake comes in. We're down. Full power. The flaps up a couple. Bit of rudder to stay straight for some reason. Not sure why it's veering. I'm having to put right rudder in there for some reason. Climbing. Gear up. And keep putting the flap up. We head straight towards that rain shower. The climb better airfield, it's a default airfield, it's not been enhanced, it's just really basics on the coast, but it's a nice place if you want to practice some uh, tactical stuff. Okay, I've got the uh, red remaining as I talked about, I think that is a bug. Through 3,000 feet, and the next thing we're going to do is transit over for our ILS, so we're going to do uh, self-position kind of vectors to final runway 13 in the bad weather, flying an ILS in the C-160. That's the plan. That is a whole lot of grey. Alright, so nicely, we are, I'm using my GPS on my little nav map. Let's, uh, let's adjust that. You can see what's coming up next. There you go, we'll climb up to about 5,000 feet. Cruise off over the Clinton Peninsula, which is that landmass you can see kind of halfway between me and Valley. Interestingly, if you're flying from Valley and you want to go to um, the Mac Loop, you can enter low level at the Clint Peninsula, head east to uh, the lake where it says Park, P-A-R-C, and then words that I can't pronounce. And then you head south from Poison Lake, and that'll give you uh, the Mac Loop. Once I'm stable at 5,000 feet, then I'll think about setting myself up for the ILS, and then, depending on how long it takes to transit, I might skip this bit in uh, post-editing. Sometimes the weather clears over the clin and it gives you just absolutely amazing views, so we'll see what we get. Okay, I want to be close as I can to 5,000 feet. There we go. Okay, altitude hold, hopefully that'll hold me at 5,000. Heading hold, in fact, if I press the heading hold, it should go, yep, snaps the heading bug to the 12 o'clock. See a little bit of a clin down there. Uh, and the next event is the ILS. So I need to set my pink needle. There we go, pink needle. I'll set that to 134. No, not that one. Not that one. What am I doing? I'm being stupid. There it is. It's just hard to get that click spot. 134 on the pink needle. It's deflecting, so that looks good. What it's giving me is a range of 48.8 miles. I have no idea why that is. In fact, what we need to do is transfer that over. There's now 108.55. But it's still giving me 48 miles. No idea. Let's have a quick look outside at the, uh, at the Clin. Apparently Bear Grylls owns an island just behind the aircraft as I see it from this angle. Not sure if that's true, I think it is. Just gorgeous. Right, approach briefing. In fact, have I shown you? I'm not sure if I flashed up the uh, at the map. There we go, we're over the Clin. We're heading towards uh, RF Valley. Not far to go. We've got Kinef and Airfield down to the right hand side, which you probably won't see because of the weather. And we'll make an approach to Valley. So the approach itself will take us uh, north and west of Valley, so over Hollyhead. At 2,000 feet AMSL, AGL, it's within 40 feet, it's kind of the same thing. So I'll just head for uh, 1013, which is the QNH, 2,000 feet for vectors into uh, into the area. And uh, 6.3 should be the mileage, I think, for the final approach fix, but I can't tell because 
the ranging's not working. If it's something I'm doing, please let me know, otherwise I'll report it as a bug. Let's position ourselves downwind, so reciprocal of my final approach track. And then what else do we need? It's about a two and a half, three degree glide path. Um, I'll take myself down to 200 feet. And I think that's all I need. So recovery checks are all complete. And we'll be there in about five minutes. So uh, when I uh, come back on the radio, we'll be positioning ourselves on the dog leg to intercept the localizer. Uh, so you've joined me back here in the descent down to 2,000 feet off to the right hand side, off to the east. You can see that uh, we have Holly Island just glimpsing out of the murk there if I pop to the outside view. There it is. That may even be the airfield or somewhere close. We're getting there. We have 700 feet to level at 2,000 feet. It's always worthwhile every time you do an ILS to have a look at the main features around here. So if there was a chance to pick yourself up visually, then you know pretty much where you're aiming for. So if I look at my map, I know that Holly Island is pretty much on the extended center line. So if I could see it, I'd have a really good essay on where I need to position. Of course, I'm flying the instruments and vectors and all that good stuff, but it's always good to have extra awareness. So this aircraft is capable of flying an ILS, uh, unlike the VOR that has some issues with the uh, scaling of the uh, course bar deflection. The localizer deflection seems to be scaled appropriately such that you can fly the ILS centerline no problem. And on the left of the ADI you can see the green diamond that's moving up on the left, that is the glide slope indicator. So whilst I don't know what my range is, because maybe it's my ignorance, maybe it's the bug, uh, the distance is not working particularly well in the ILS. But uh, as long as I start descending when the glide slope is active then, or in the centre, then it should mean that I'm at the correct range. This is where I'm going to work hard and earn my keep flying an ILS accurately in a big aircraft like this. This is where the workload starts increasing. I'm now turning onto base, maybe a slight dog leg to intercept. And I'm slowing down, so I need to keep making sure the trim is appropriate. And I'll need to configure the aircraft. And I'll need to watch out for the uh, localizer center line coming in. But I can see on the left hand side where the white arrow is pointing towards the ILS nav aid. I'm not entirely sure that does that in real life. I have to admit, I've never really noticed. Um, but when that white arrow gets towards 1 3 or whatever the uh, magnetic heading of the runway is, then you can anticipate the center line of the pink needle coming in. So that's one way of doing that. We'll select a couple of stages of flaps. Pushing the nose forward to stop it ballooning. You can see the center line of the ILS coming in. The glide slope is also a little active, so let's put the gear down. Here's a dog leg. The wind is actually it looks like more of a tailwind, slightly from the right perhaps. I'm established. I can legally start descending down. Let's put another couple of stages of flaps. The glide slope is there. I'm looking for about 130 knots, which gives me about a requirement of 750 feet a minute. I'll start with about half a degree nose down. That's way too much. Put a half a degree up. See what that gives me. Okay, we established gear down. And looking like we're in a good place. Look at that weather. Wind is slightly from the right, so maybe a degree or so to the right. Descent rate's looking good. We're going down to 200 feet height. Look at that. I'll try and get some external views if I can. Let's try that. Nice. Uh, where were we? There we go. The sign of being in trim on parameters is that uh, you can look outside and get back and it still be where you left it, kind of. Okay, we're at through 1200 feet. Localized is good, glide path is wandering ever so slightly a little bit. There we go. Just amazing. There we 
go. Looking good. Looks like Valley is under a rain shower. Figures. Slightly left of centre line. You can tell I'm concentrating because I don't talk so much. Oh, are those lights? Oh, don't bite off on lights. I think they are. I think they are. Yes, they are. Okay, 600 feet, we are visual with the runway. Decision land. Gone a little bit low on the glide slope. There we go, coming back in. Of course, the ILS gets more sensitive the closer you get, so you need to really be precise in your inputs. Okay, flaps are now full. Got gear down, flap clearance to land. Aiming for the runway threshold now. Oh, it does give you a DH on the attitude indicator. Nice. And floating it, floating it, floating it. Reverse thrust, and we're down. So that's the end of this sortie. I hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any questions, chuck those in the comments. If you liked it, hit the like. And if you want to support the channel, hit that subscribe button. Until the next time, take care and fly safe.